I'm Mike, and in this episode, diabetes. More specifically, how our culture is massively misunderstanding the true causes of diabetes, as well as the cause and potential cure of, say, Tom Hanks' type 2 diabetes. You've got type 2 diabetes, young man. As well as the cause and mitigation of, say, Nick Jonas's type 1 diabetes. Um, I, was, I was days away from a coma. According to the CDC, almost 10% of people in the US are diabetic. And in addition to that, 70 million people are pre-diabetic. And diabetes is one of the leading causes of death. It's also a major cause of disability, amputations, blindness. As a culture, we've singled out sugar as the main cause of diabetes. When in reality, if diabetes is like a forest fire, sugar is more like a strong wind. It's gonna spread the fire, but it's definitely not gonna cause the fire. So in a bit, we're gonna find out what is actually striking that fire in the first place. But first, as you may know, there are two types of diabetes. There's type one diabetes, which was formerly known as juvenile, uh, diabetes, which is insulin dependent, and then there's type 2 diabetes, which is what 90% of people have, and so I'm gonna get into that first. So type 2 diabetes. And I think it actually goes back to a lifestyle that I've been leading ever since I was probably seven years old. But at least he knows that it's somewhat caused by diet and lifestyle. So what could be giving Tom Hanks diabetes from the age of seven? Well, here's a study that followed 17,000 people, and they found that for every 50 gram increase of meat consumption, there was an 8% increased chance of getting diabetes. The biggest cultural misconception about diabetes is that carbs are universally bad and high protein foods are a good way to manage insulin. Well, that is wrong because protein is insulinogenic as well. This study created an index for the insulin production of various foods and found that meat spiked insulin as much as pure white sugar. And this isn't just some vegan fringe science. This is published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. Here are some other foods and how they match up. If you look at white pasta, that actually spikes insulin less than fish. All of this creates a pretty clear picture of how when you go on a vegan diet, you can reduce your insulin levels by one third as this study shows. But there are a lot of mechanisms that animal products increase the risk of diabetes with. Let's look at saturated fat. Directly from the American Heart Association, which has zero vegan biases, here is where we get our saturated fat from. Pretty much all animal products, at least the vast majority of it is from animal products. The first thing you need to know is that insulin is created by the beta cells on our pancreas. A healthy pancreas can respond appropriately to incoming sugar but saturated fat can damage the beta cells on our pancreas and make it very difficult to appropriately respond to sugar that is being eaten. Here are the levels of a beta cell killing protein known as death protein 5 after you've eaten saturated fat compared to when you're eating the fat that you'll find in plants like avocados. Which is why the same study concluded that saturated fats are harmful to beta cells. See, saturated fat raises free fatty acids, which are lipotoxins that are toxic to our beta cells. This study said, quote, a chronic increase in plasma free fatty acid levels is harmful as shown by the important effects of these dietary components in pancreatic beta cell lipotoxicity. Fatty acid derivatives can interfere with the function of these cells and ultimately lead to their death. You can put saturated fat into somebody's system and actually watch their pancreatic function be impaired. I think I was genetically inclined to get it. I think Tom Hanks is right about being genetically inclined to get diabetes. Sort of like how you can be genetically inclined to bruise when you get punched in the face. This study touches on that topic with a prolonged elevation of free fatty acids, which are raised by saturated fat as we just learned, impairs insulin producing beta cells, particularly in individuals with genetic predisposition. And here is Dr. Neil Bernard who studies the effects of a plant-based diet on diabetes. Diabetes is genetic, right? It runs in families, and there in fact are genes for diabetes. But this is an important thing to remember. Genes are in two categories. Certain genes are dictators. I'm talking about the genes that say blue eyes or brown hair. They are dictators, they give orders, you can't argue. But the genes for diabetes are committees. Their activity depends on what we put into our bodies. So perhaps Tom Hanks' diabetes genes are activated by eating animal products. This is a prime example of how, even though you may believe that you're have no control over a disease that you have because it's genetic, 
If you just are willing to give up animal products, you can gain control again. And here's another study published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition that follows 650 men and concluded that if saturated fatty acids as a percentage of total energy were decreased from 14 to 8%, there would be an 18% decrease in fasting insulin and a 25% decrease in insulin after eating. But saturated fat is just one mechanism. Animal protein itself may also be punching Tom Hanks's pancreas in the face. The next is animal protein, leucine, and TOR. Turns out that animal protein is loaded with the amino acid leucine, which overstimulates the enzyme TOR. TOR is known to accelerate aging, and as this chart shows, it also burns out those beta cells that produce insulin from our pancreas. So high meat intake equals high leucine intake, which overstimulates TOR and burns out our insulin-producing beta cells. And it turns out a plant-based diet and plants in general have way less leucine than animal products. You would have to eat 100 apples to get as much leucine as 100 grams of steak. Which is why this study concluded with, quote, critical attention needs to be paid to the daily intake of animal proteins, especially leucine-rich meat and dairy proteins. Now for intramyocellular lipids or fat within the muscle cell. It turns out that a animal product rich high fat diet doesn't just make it harder for you to produce insulin, it also makes it difficult for your body to use the insulin that it can make. On a high fat diet, like the typical Western diet where we consume 33% of our total calories from fat, according to the CDC, uh, the fat can end up inside and around your muscle cells, which makes it very difficult for insulin pathways to work correctly. Everything just gets gummed up. You may have heard of insulin resistance. As this study shows, intramyocellular lipids are strongly associated with insulin sensitivity. With fat inside your muscle cells, glucose trying to get inside to feed your muscles is a bit like you trying to get into your car after your nephew just poured a bucket of bacon grease all over it. A study by Neil Bernard, who you just heard from, found that the intramyocellular lipids of vegans versus omnivores is 31% less. So a vegan diet is clearly helpful, but let's look at what other benefits a plant-based diet can have. In addition to just reducing your saturated fat and leucine intake, here's a study showing that the less animal products you eat, the lower incidence you have of diabetes. And here's another study, again, American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, that showed when you switch someone to a plant-based diet, you can reduce their diabetes, take them off their medication entirely in 55% of the cases. Not only is reducing the consumption of animal products super effective, but just eating more plants can be amazing as well. Eating more beans, turns out beans can have the same effect in slowing sugar absorption as one of the leading diabetic drugs. Now for type 1 diabetes. Previously known as juvenile diabetes or insulin dependent diabetes, this is an autoimmune disease in which your own body attacks those insulin producing cells on your pancreas. Nick Jonas from the Jonas Brothers is one of approximately 2 million people in the US that have this disease. Here he is. You were diagnosed at age 13, right? I was, yeah, age yeah. 13. My brother's What were your were. symptoms? Brothers and I were on tour. This is where, once again, society is completely wrong about the cause. We believe that dairy products and milk are really healthy for you and even necessary, but it turns out that they are the driving factor in type 1 diabetes. Here's how it works. Casein, a milk protein, has the exact same 17 amino acids as the beta cells on your pancreas. As we digest casein, a leaky gut can let that sequence of amino acids into your bloodstream where your body will create antibodies to target and kill these amino acids. But since those antibodies are gonna be free floating around in your blood, they're gonna reach your pancreas and they're going to also attack the beta cells on your pancreas. This is backed by the levels of cow's milk antibodies in diabetic children when compared to normal children. They have levels that are often eight times as high and they have dangerously high peaks of these antibodies. And these antibodies are in your blood so they undoubtedly make it to your pancreas where they can just destroy your beta cells. Cells. So you can imagine a 13 year old Nick Jonas on tour just getting fed chocolate milk and other milk products that led to the destruction of his pancreas. In a way it really is child abuse. And the issue is that after the age of 20 we stop producing new beta cells. So the damage that is done is done. But there is hope. It seems that people with type 1 diabetes who go on a plant-based diet can have dramatic results. Here's what Ken Thomas said he went on a plant-based diet about six years back. He said, my blood sugar remains easily under control and I have never experienced even one hint of diabetic complication. So the obvious solution for people with type 1 diabetes is to not trigger an autoimmune reaction by 
eating dairy and also to not eat meat, keep the fat out of your cells, keep the saturated fat away, and you can see dramatic results, I'm sure. Moving past type one diabetes specifically and looking at some extreme conditions that are caused by diabetes. Here, number one is diabetic retinopathy or just diabetic blindness. Modern medicine can only promise a slowing of the progression of diabetic blindness with techniques like shooting lasers at your retinas, but a plant-based diet can reverse it and without a laser beam to the eyeball. This was first showed actually in the 1950s by Dr. Kempner with his famous rice diet, where he thought he was gonna make it worse because it was a 90% carb diet, but it turns out he reversed diabetic blindness in 30% of the patients. The diet of rice, fruit, and no animal products, he took people from not being able to read headlines to normal vision. Then there's diabetic neuropathy where people can experience decades of burning pain, which is brutal. But it turns out that in just four to 16 days on a plant-based diet, 80% of people get complete relief from diabetic neuropathy. Finally, to put the irrational carb fearing at ease, the Okinawan people who ate a diet of 85% of calories from carbohydrates had no problems with diabetes whatsoever. That doesn't mean you should go chug a bottle of high fructose corn syrup, but please don't be afraid of carbs from whole plant foods. In conclusion, Tom Hanks could very well rid himself of his type 2 diabetes by switching to a plant-based diet, and Nick Jonas could say goodbye to any fear of diabetic complications. And everybody with diabetes in general could reduce their chance of death, disability, amputation, blindness, and a constant uncontrollable burning pain. Yeah, but meat and dairy taste so good. It's not worth giving up to make every other aspect of my life better. You know, something's gonna kill us all, Dave. Yeah. Something's gonna kill well, us all. Well, so. good for So go vegan. Try it for yourself. Thank you for watching. Diabetes has, it sounds like you're gonna die when you hear it.